So we proceed with the last factor of environment, business environment, and that is te technological factors. So far, we are all aware that technology is a key resource wh wh when it comes to uh, digital enterprises. So it's a, a key resource that de in many ways determines the, 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 the success of our, of our businesses. And we also spoke in the second lecture about uh, dis dis uh, disruptive technologies, where we appreciated the fact that technology changes very fast. What, what, what uh, is regarded as a superior technology today may be completely useless uh, tomorrow. So it is very important for business managers uh, that are managing in, uh, digital enterprises to keep their eyes open and monitor technological changes because the kind of technology that you are using may determine your uh, competitive uh, strength in the market. And as I said, because technology changes very fast, sometimes it's difficult to, to, to predict. As new technologies come into the market, it may be difficult to pre predict how useful those technologies may be to your business or how they may affect uh, the entire market landscape. <laughs> These are quotes from some business leaders in the past that usually <laughs> underestimated certain technologies. So to start with is a quote from Ken Olson. This was the president of uh, Digital Equipment Corporation. And he said in 1977 that there is no reason for any individual to have a computer in their home. And this was uh, a leader of a leading uh, technology companies. He underestimated the power of computers. And this is another quote from Thomas Watson in 1943. He said, I think there is, uh, is a world market for maybe five computers. Big mistake. And that is a, a third quote is from uh, Mike Lazarus, uh, the co-founder of BlackBerry. And this was a a leading uh, smartphone uh, company in the early 2000s. Uh, in, in those days, uh, when people talked about smartphones, then you would be referring to the BlackBerry. But we all know the status of BlackBerry today. And this guy made a lot of uh, mistakes when it, it came to evaluating Apple. In 2006, when uh, Apple was introducing iPhone, he made a lot of quotes underestimating the impact of Apple. In fact, at, at one point, he, he even called an iPhone a toy that nobody will care about. I think back in 2003 or four, he said no one would have a use for a camera on a mobile phone. And he said he, didn't, he thought it wasn't necessary for BlackBerry to have a camera. So this is a, 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 a co one of the recent quotes from 2010, and he was speaking about uh, uh, tablets. Specifically, he was speaking about, he was referring to an iPad in a way said, so the question you have to ask yourself is, when it comes to tablets, what markets or what opportunities still it's solving? What problems is it solving? So he said he didn't think tablets w w was anything that would have significant impact in the market, but we all know today that this was a big mistake. Such mistakes could also be, committed by many business managers, and not only to co technologies such as uh, uh, computers or mobile devices, any other technology that you could underestimate the potential impact of uh, a given technology that comes into, into market. And usually, when it comes to technology adoption, managers can be divided into th three groups. There are those that are cautious, that th these are people that will always wait and see what will happen with the technology. They don't want to be the first one to, to use a new technology because they are cautious about what uh, might happen, uh, w w what could be the, the repercussion of uh, using that technology. So these are quite uh, risk averse uh, managers that always wait for other people to adopt technology and then they can follow. Right? And then you have risk taking. And these are early adopters, uh, uh, adopters of technology that whenever new technology comes in, 
they jump on the ship and start experimenting. Also, you have intermediate approach where I would say you, a manager takes a calculated uh, risk. You recognize that uh, there could be huge potential for taking risk, that the return for adopting a new technology could be enormous, but also you understand sometimes adopting a new technology could lead into a serious uh, failure of your business. So this is a 50-50 approach where you're trying to experiment while taking uh, necessary precautions. So when it comes to technology uh, uh, adoption, Rogers uh, uh, developed a, a wonderful model that is still applicable today. And this is called the technology diffusion adoption uh, process, which pretty much ap applies to technologies or even uh, to products. And he categorized individuals into five groups where you have innovators that are people who are leading the, the breakthrough and they're at the forefront of uh, using the, the new products or new uh, technologies. And then uh, these are followed by early adopters that are becoming aware of the new technology and they jump onto it. And then you have the early majority, people that after observing the early adopters have been successful with the technologies, they also follow the crowd. And then you have late majority, these are people that join uh, the technology after quite a substantial number of people have joined and it, the technology appears to be uh, a proven uh, 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 experiment where the results seem to be very promising and nobody regrets, then the late majority will also come on board. And then you have the laggards. These are people follow the technology after everyone else has uh, been using the technology. Now, when it comes to biz the business strategy, this has implications. Adapting technology at this stage, it means that you are behind everyone else, that all the risk takers the innovators, the early adopters, early majority, late ma majority have been using this technology and you are, you are catching the last bus, which means you will have a very uh, little impact in the, in the market because this is something everybody else is doing. But again, as uh, I, I said earlier, while you're considering taking risk of adopting new technologies, you also need to calculate uh, uh, potential costs in case things go wrong. So these are estimates of uh, people's attitude towards uh, technology adoption. And it, it, you have quite few innovators, as usual, like only 2.5%. And then you, you have these uh, uh, opinion uh, leaders, early adopters, about 13.5%. And then you have early majority, 34% late majority 34% and then you have laggers, those who are catching the bus in the last uh, minute. So alternative, this is a, a portrayal of the same model. An alternative model to te technology uh, adoption was developed by uh, Gartner and this is called the uh, uh, Gartner hype cycle. So. It's a model that also p p portrays how technology uh, develops in, in the market. It, it, it has uh, five stages. And the first stage is technology trigger, where the techno te technology breakthrough uh, kicks off and people start experimenting and there is a hype in the market. Everybody talks about the new technology. Uh, the media covers about uh, potential uh, uh, consequences of the new uh, technology. There are a lot of positive stories. And then the peak of, of inflated expectations come in because usually when a new technology uh, kicks in the market, people develop a lot of expectations. But after some time, we start hearing some disappointing stories that kind, some of the promises that we, we heard about the new technology may not be delivered. And people start getting disappointed the media stops talking about uh, the, the technology. 
And then you have the trough of disillusionment. And at this stage, everybody, or at least majority of people, seem to ignore the technology because whatever was promised in the beginning uh, did not happen. So you have quite a few people that are using the technology. And at this stage, if the technology developer fails to upgrade the technology, then most likely that technology will collapse. But in case, if they manage to solve the problems that were experienced here, that when people face disappointment with respect to the performance of the technology, then the, the technology will manage to go through to the next level. And that is slope of enlightenment, where you have some companies that have choose to try the, new, uh, the upgraded technology of the developers. And in, this is uh, when we hear uh, technologies on the second or third generation. And as these people here try the, the new versions of the te te technology, and the technology proves to be successful, then the last stage is plateau of productivity. And, and this framework is updated from time to time. You can visit. Uh, this website from time to time, and the w he will list the different technologies that are in the market at a certain time and uh, which level of the hype cycle they are in. So how do you use uh, these cycles? In most cases, you use this uh, for assessing uh, the promise of uh, emerging t technology. If you look at this, this is the cycle from 2000 and 13, and he was listing, li listing different technologies at that time and at different stages of the hype cycle that they were in. So for instance, uh, quantum computing was in the innovation trigger. So there was a lot of talk about this. And it seems a lot to be very much uh, promising. Then neuro business, autom uh, autonomous vehicles where Google uh, was hearing a lot of buzz about uh, vehicles that will drive uh, themselves. You have uh, speech to speech translation technology, the Internet of Things, where things would start uh, communicating to, to one another. So in 2013, this was at the innovation trigger. Everybody talks about these things, and they seem to be very promising. And then he, big data was uh, at the peak, that there was a lot of talk about big data and all, all the kind of things that big data w would uh, uh, bring about in the business landscape. And in 2013, it seems like it had reached the peak, that some of the uh, promises that big data came with appeared to be illusions or were exaggerations. So people were kind of skeptical uh, at that stage. So how you use this uh, framework at any particular time is you visit the, uh, uh, this website and you see the, the update. What technology and where is it? And then you make decision whether you should make uh, an early move. Is it something that is worthwhile to adapt at that time or not? Or should you use a moderate approach where you take some calculated risk? Or should you wait for the technology to, to mature and to be a, a well-proven prov uh, pr uh, uh, project that uh, is safe to engage with. So depending on risk orientations, different managers will take different uh, decisions. But at least you know some of the tools that can help you to assess uh, the status of technologies. So how can you identify new technologies? at any given period of time. And here you have uh, four suggestions. One is uh, technology networking. Uh, that is the network of your friends, people you know, organizations that you collaborate. By being connected to those people, you can always keep track of what is happening uh, in the industry. And that could be you, your network could be an important source of uh, new technology. Crowdsourcing, and this is an increasing uh, uh, approaching these days where organizations are using uh, their customers, they are using uh, partners uh, to create, uh, uh, to generate business ideas. So you, for instance, you can use a, a brand uh, community uh, that you have established to, to, to ask for suggestions. And amazingly, 
people always come up with wonderful ideas that you, you couldn't imagine. So a lot of, com I'll give you an example of a company that use crowdsourcing in, in a second. Another approach is technology hunting. You have heard from time to time comp large technology companies like Facebook or Google uh, buying new technology startups. So these companies are doing what they call is called technology hunting, that they, from time to time, they scan the environment to see new technology startups that have huge uh, potential. And they go ahead to buy those companies. So this is one of the approach that you could use uh, to, to, to buy or to access n new technology. And then you have a traditional approach, and that is technology mining, which is w w what this uh, does is, uh, is uh, to uh, a manager reviews uh, documents, uh, previous technologies, and other sources of information, and they connect the dots to create a new uh, technology. So I said I would say, I'll give an example of uh, crowdsourcing. And this is uh, Daily. Daily is, uh, implements a product called the uh, Daily Social Innovation Challenge, where students are encouraged to, to team up and come up with uh, ideas. And the winners get quite a huge prize uh, for that. And a lot of companies are doing that, uh, like using students and, and other uh, communities uh, as a source of business ideas. So quickly, I will move on to So now I will proceed to talk about the sharing economy. Speaking about the uh, business uh, environment, I thought we should also uh, talk a little bit uh, about uh, a trendy phenomenon that is happening in the business environment today. This is not in your book. I have tried to develop materials from different sources. And I think it, it should be quite enough, like what I have uh, 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 developed in, in these slides. So probably some of you have come across such headlines in newspapers. Today's smart choices don't own, share. Or probably you have come across uh, a headline uh, like this. This is from a online uh, Norwegian newspaper. And uh, casual translation into English would be, sharing economy has no boundaries. New digital services turn business model in hotel and taxi industries upside down. Or probably a headline like this. This is from uh, a Danish uh, newspaper. Sharing economy can challenge traditional business models. Or maybe this, sharing economy is the way forward. Or probably one like this, the rise of the sharing economy. In the Norwegian language in 2014, the sharing economy, uh, Dell economy, is uh, one of the words that were regarded to be most prominent in the media for the year 2014. What, does, uh, what do these headlines tell you. One thing they tell you is that we have now a new economic model that is operating in the business environment. And as you, you can um, recall from the headlines, one of the, uh, of the newspapers said this new economic model is turning the traditional business models upside down. And that is true. We, we will see in a couple of uh, minutes. So what is sharing economy? Is it something really significant? Yes. These uh, are estimates from force that estimate that equivalent revenue flowing through the share economy directly into people's wallets would surpass 3.5 billion in 2014. And these are estimates from PwC that say by 2025, the sharing economy sectors could generate over half of overall sales in the 10 sectors, in 10 sectors where sharing models are currently applied a potential revenue opportunity worth 335 billion. So this is a huge thing. You cannot underestimate the sharing uh, economy with such impressive uh, figures. So what is it? The sharing economy simply means is a social economic system built around the sharing of human and physical resources. So what it 
it does is through a, a, with sharing economy, individuals, uh, organizations, different in entities share uh, resources or exchange resources. And this could be peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, could be, uh, it's also known as peer-to-peer -peer economy, mesh economy, collaborative economy, collabor um, collaborative consumption economy. All these are terms that mean the, the same thing. And it could happen in terms of shared creation, production, distribution, trade, and consumption of goods and services by different people and organizations. We, we will look at the examples of each of, of these. And how it happens, it could be for profit, for not, non, for not profit, or better in terms of exchanging uh, goods, or cooperative structures. We, we will look at all uh, these uh, instances individually. Of course, some people may say sharing economy started in early 2000, where the global community started to recognize that uh, we own uh, so much uh, stuff that we, some of which we really don't need. But of course, all the truth is the sharing economy can be tra traced back from the oldest in instincts as human. This is, uh, the sharing economy is a reflection of uh, human nature the human spirit of cooperation, sharing, generosity, individual choice, and flexibility. Most of these uh, uh, sharing uh, economy business models are based on what is called two-sided market. Uh, by two-sided uh, market is uh, you have uh, two individuals or two uh, organizations that are willing to exchange uh, resources or to, uh, to, to share resources, either for profits, that is in return for a mutually agreed price, or in some cases for free. So today, in, the, in this era of sharing economy, it's very common to find someone online that uh, will be willing to rent you a room in, in their house. If you go to a website like um, Airbnb. So this is a place where you can find wherever in the world someone that is willing to, to rent you their, 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 their room at a price that is much more favorable in some cases than what a hotel would uh, offer you. We'll, we will talk a more about this uh, later. Sometimes you could find someone that is willing to share their car. You could find someone that is willing to rent their child's toys. You could find someone that is willing to walk your dog. You could find someone that is willing to deliver your dinner. You could find someone that is willing to assemble your furniture. Or are you planning to go for an event where you don't have the appropriate uh, outfit? You could find someone online that is willing to lend their clothes for a day or two. There are different systems that uh, this uh, sharing economy happens. One is the product service markets where users pay for the benefit of using a product without needing to own the product. So uh, in this case, for instance, in case of uh, 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 renting a room, you, you might be traveling to a, a town where you can find someone online where they are reading to, to they are willing to, to rent you their room or sometimes even a couch that you can use it for a night or two without owning it in, in fact and pay them uh, a mutually agreed price which in most cases could be very uh, affordable or sometimes it may happen in form of redistribution markets that is uh, uh, people that uh, own certain items that they no longer need they can pass it on to people that uh, need it. And this happens on platforms such as eBay, uh, Fin.in, or where you, we can uh, pass on our second hand uh, items to people that uh, need it. And sometimes this could be for free. For instance, uh, if you go to freecycle.org, uh, this is where people uh, share their, product, their items or their properties for free. But sometimes it could be in terms of swapping goods that uh, 
you have something that you don't need, you find, and you are, need, you need, you are in need of something else, so you, you go to a platform such as swap.com where you find uh, a person that needs what you, you have and they have what you, you, you need. And then you can swap uh, items. It can also happen in terms of collaborative lifestyles where people exchange uh, resources that are not necessarily tangible, for, exa for example, time, space, skills, and money. So for instance, if you are, you are going to Oslo and you are in need of a parking space and may maybe uh, the, the public park parking spaces are quite expensive, you can find someone that is going to work and their parking, pa parking lot is idle and they can let you uh, park for a certain price. Uh, uh, the, the day before yesterday, I was just uh, uh, looking for a parking lot and I found a, a couple of uh, people on, the, on this website just park. And they said I could park for so, uh, seven Norwegian crowns for the whole day, but of course you, you need to take a quite a uh, substantial contract only when they are at work because they know that when they are at work their parking space is not used so they can let it to someone else. So if you go to this website, just park, you can find, a, you, you can enter a town where you want to visit and you can find people that are willing to, to rent you a parking space. It ha uh, diff uh, this happens in, uh, in different forms in terms of participants and one form is peer-to-peer -peer market uh, places where individuals uh, do the, the exchange and those are examples, Airbnb, Just Shade, where individuals that have something that they, uh, they are willing to rent out, uh, they put it on such uh, platforms and people that are in need of it uh, access uh, those resources. But also, it, it, it can happen in, 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 in terms of uh, crowdfunding, where uh, these platforms provide opportunities for entrepreneurs, artists, or civic programs uh, projects to raise funds from individuals. Also, it can happen in terms of uh, uh, in innovation uh, exchange, where people with certain skills and expertise are willing to share their knowledge with other people. And that is one uh, example of the website where you can find solution uh, pretty much to everything. That, so you, you have a problem that you need to, uh, to, to solve or you are looking for a solution. And this, uh, on, the, on this, that website, you have people that are problem solvers that are willing to share solutions with you. You have education marketplaces where people are willing to share uh, knowledge. And this has uh, impact to traditional educational institutions because today, with the internet, people can learn almost everything for free. And this means that uh, universities and uh, other education institutions need to reconsider the, their strategy because the internet makes almost everyone become a mean expert or a mean professor in the sense that people are able to share their knowledge uh, on the internet. And in some cases, this happens for, for free which means universities and other education institutions need uh, to reevaluate their value proposition to give people a reason to come to school and get a certificate because there are so many other alternative sources of knowledge out there. And of course, the governments too are not behind on this. Uh, we see increasingly so many governments are trying to share information and knowledge to facilitate uh, innovation among businesses. And here is an example from Innovation, Innovation Norge. It's a, a platform where, uh, in, in a way, it's a government agency sharing information relevant to uh, businesses in Norway. Likewise, we have government to citizen platforms where government try to in increase government uh, uh, citizen engagement in political uh, processes by providing platforms such as that of open uh, government. But there are a couple of things that you, you need to uh, consider when it comes to the sharing economy. One of them is trust, and this is the core uh, principle of sharing economy. With this uh, economy, people share items that 
in some cases of quite high value, which means there should be a very high level of trust between participants. Imagine inviting a total stranger to your room to spend a night uh, or two. It could have uh, serious uh, repercussions. We have heard a lot of stories, unpleasant stories, uh, of people that invited strangers in good faith, but uh, things may not go as uh, you uh, may expect. So trust is n number one. And if you plan to engage in this type of business, it means that uh, you need to have, have uh, substantial information about those that you are trans transacting with. Related to trust is transparency. If you are planning to be part of this uh, economy, you need to be transparent, that you need to be give confidence, those that you are about to transact with, in terms of giving them sufficient Im information that is relevant for them uh, to establish who you are and why they should trust you. And then another principle is access, uh, we, we, is the recognition of the fact that access can be equally valuable as ownership. That with this economy, uh, ownership in some cases could be equally uh, in value as uh, 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 access. So in this case, uh, it, participants uh, uh, will just uh, prefer, and most of the sharing economic uh, models are based on access, that you are not taking ownership of the, uh, of the item, but you are just using. So in case of uh, uh, renting out your parking space, it means the person will use it for a period of time where you don't use it, and the parking lot remains yours, and they cannot take ownership of it. And then another uh, principle is uh, recognition of the fact that unused value is a wasted value. So in this uh, new economic model, the emphasis is that uh, no value should remain idle. Whether it's time, products, services, we should put them into use. Because whenever they remain idle, that's a wasted value. So if you have a parking lot, you have a couch that is idle, put it into use by letting others uh, use it in return for a price uh, that is agreed between the two of you. There are so many benefits of uh, uh, sharing economy. Uh, the, 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 those who advocate the sharing economy have an uh, argue that it helps to conserve the, the environment in terms of uh, CO2 reduction. For instance, with a uh, uh, shared ride. Uh, you, you, uh, have you heard about the company called uh, Uber? The, the shared ride company. So uh, w one of the, uh, uh, of the um, uh, sharing uh, economy uh, activities that are happening today that uh, a shared ride where you have uh, your car and say you are driving to the airport, you can let someone that is driving to the, uh, that is going to the same uh, uh, direction get in your car, that could, they could contribute a little bit uh, on fuel, or you could do it uh, for, for free. And if that is the case, if we can share uh, things like cars, then there is a huge potential for preserving the environment. But also it helps to save costs uh, by borrowing and recycling items. In instead of buying new things, we, with the sharing economy, people can buy second and uh, staff at lower prices. But more important, sharing epo uh, economy provides opportunity for all of us to make money. And these are, uh, I'll share with you uh, uh, some of the uh, ways through which you, you, you can make money. So your staff, do you have something like, you have you bought, say, tools that, that you used you wanted you, you you wanted to use it for a certain purpose that you no longer use them. It is possible today to share it with someone that needs those tools. If you go to that platform, you you can list up your your stuff that you would like to share other with other people, and it's not li li limited to just tools, but could share pretty much everything. Or you have a room that is idle and you would like to rent it out. If you go to Airbnb that I just showed you, you could rent it out. Your car, applications such as Get Around can help you connect with someone who needs a car. You can rent out your car when you don't 
uh, need it. And an app, an app such as Get, out, uh, Get Around can help you connect with people that uh, need a car that's at, at the time when you don't need it. You want to give somebody a ride? Become a, an Uber driver, and you will receive alerts from people who need a ride. So with Uber, you have a, a, an application where people can locate you, and you can communicate uh, with passengers that would like uh, to get uh, a ride from a, a, a specific uh, uh, location. And this can help you earn extra income. You have extra money that you want to, to invest. You have platforms such as Kickstarter, where you can give whatever you, are, you, you have to someone that has a business idea. So you go through, the people are posting uh, great business ideas every day. And you, if you are impressed with anyone that you think has uh, potential for huge return, you can invest your money. And there are testimonies of people that have received uh, quite handsome returns for the money they invested on this platform. And this is just one example. There are so many other platforms like that. Or sometimes yourself. Do you, are you idle? You're looking for something to, to do? Or are you willing to share your skills, yeah, your time or talents? If you go to a platform such as TaskRabbit, you will find people that are posting their needs, that they are looking for someone to pick stuff from a grocery store or do anything. Or if you are not a handyman, you can post on this uh, uh, platform and look for somebody that can help you fix a furniture or anything. Your parking spot, as I say, go to Just Park. And of course, these uh, services, some of them are already in Norway and some of them are not so much developed in Norway, but they are in the United States. But at least by looking at what is happening in those other countries, it can tell us what is likely to happen in this country or any other country in the near future. As I said, this uh, new economic model is challenging the traditional uh, business models because with this model, e anything that can be shared, in fact, it will be shared. And this poses a challenge to companies that are offering durable items like cars, uh, furniture, and others. Because with this new economy, and the way it is, it is easier today to buy our, our second-hand uh, stuff or to get some of this stuff for free, it means those businesses are at a very high risk of being out of business. And what we are saying is, it's important for businesses now to reconsider embracing the sharing uh, economy uh, models. And we, we, we know a lot of companies that are doing that uh, uh, at the moment. So th here are some of the statistics showing acceptability of uh, the sharing economy. This is a global survey where people express how willing they are to embrace the new, uh, this new economic model. So as I said, the most important lesson from this is uh, to know that this is one of the challenges that companies are facing. I think I, uh, I read it, it, it was in November or something, uh, tax drivers in Oslo uh, it rose up to, to oppose uh, Uber in Norway. And this has happened in many countries because they are literally eliminating them from the business. So, and what happens to, to the tax drivers or to hotels uh, with respect to Airbnb can happen to any other industry. So as a business manager, you need to think about this sharing economy and consider how you can restructure your, your, your business strategy to fit into this uh, context. So we have five minutes, and I will talk a little bit about uh, the second assignment.
so I, I have received links to the websites to, to, to most of you. And most of the business ideas are quite impressive. Uh, when you read the ideas, you, might, you, you get a feel that probably we will produce one of the future billionaires from this class. But however, there are quite a few people that did not follow instructions. And that is, I said, the, you need to create a website. And those ideas have to be in a website and not in a document. So for those of you who submitted a document instead of a, a document with a link to the website, you have two, three days to, to, to correct this. And it's pretty easy because uh, you, you already have the business idea. All that you need is to create a website and have those web, um, uh, ideas on a website. Because in the second assignment, it's very important to have a website and not a document which describes your business ideas. But most of you did uh, quite well with respect to the instruct requirements of the assignment. So in the second assignment, we will continue to work on, the, on your uh, business ideas. And the goal is to select one idea that could be developed into a complete business plan. But at this stage, I want you to give comments on other groups business uh, ideas. And what you will do is each one of you will be assigned a website where you will be a website of another group where you will be required to, to review the, the business ideas and select the best idea among those presented by the group. And for those that did the assignment individually, and therefore they have only one idea, the evaluator will just evaluate that idea. To do the evaluation, for instance, uh, I'm give you, I'll give you some tips you can use uh, ev uh, criteria for evaluation, uh, uh, evaluating uh, uh, a digital business that we learned in uh, lecture number five. That is, look at the concept and consider questions like uh, how interesting the idea is. Is the value proposition appealing? So imagine you were a customer to that uh, business that is suggested. Would you buy that product? Is it interesting? Is it appealing? Innovation, how new this business idea is. And I encourage you to use search engine to, to look around to find out if the idea suggested is new or not. So look at the extent of innovation, how new the idea is. If it's copied, where is it from? And how is it different in, in the current uh, context? Execution, is it possible to implement this uh, idea? And of course, when it comes to uh, execution, only imagination is, is the limit. But uh, it just uh, consider how realistic the, the idea could be. And also think about financing. And when it comes to financing, uh, I don't want you to consider which potential financial sources that they, they could have. But I want you to think, to imagine, if you had your extra money and someone was telling you, this idea is cool, I want you to invest in this. Would you, will, will you be willing to invest in this uh, business idea? Does it have any potential for creating profit? Profile, how the society would receive this idea? Is, is it in line with ethical standards? So I want you to consider this criteria and uh, evaluate the website that will be assigned to you. So I don't know if it, we, we have time to that. But if you, you go to the uh, front of document uh, named groups, you will find uh, your group uh, number. And in front of it, you will have uh, your, uh, the link to your website. And next to it, you, there will be a link to the website that you are supposed to evaluate. So go through the, the, the business ideas and suggest the best business idea based on this criteria or any other criteria that you may think you, you may consider to be relevant. And you have until 24th of uh, February to give uh, feedback to the group. And the feedback. It's, it, could, it could be given two ways. One is most of you have a 
there is a possibility to leave comments on the website. You, they, uh, they have a, a space where you can write uh, comments. So in that case, you can give your feedback there. So you pick up the best idea and give reasons why you think of the ideas they suggest that is the, the most suitable. But alternatively, if someone has a website which doesn't have a, a, a possibility for leaving a comment, then they should have at least uh, one email address where you can give your comments and send them. Uh, uh, you can write your comments and send them on, a, on an email. And the group that doesn't have uh, uh, a possibility for uh, receiving comments on their website, then they have a responsibility to publish these comments uh, from your reviewer on your website. So that's it. And I'll see you next week.